households, both alike in dignity, in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the facial loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life. Whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death-marked love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us? Sir. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. You lie. Draw your swords if you be men. You Draw bite your swords, sir. Sir. You, you lie. lie. You you lie. Quarrel, sir. sir. We, we will quarrel, sir. Quarrel, sir. We, we will quarrel, sir. sir. Absolutely, sir. Draw your, Draw your swords. Perk! Fools! Part of your swords! You know not what you do! What? Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio! Look upon thy death! I do but keep the peace! Put up thy sword or manage it to part these men with me! What? Drawn? And talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee! Heaven thee, coward! Clubs, bills, partisans, strike! Beat them down, down with the Montague. Down with the Capulets! Down with the Capulets! Here, bring me my longsword home! A crutch, a crutch! Why call you for a sword? My sword, I say, old Montague has come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbor stain steel. Will they not hear? What ho! You men, you beast, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls, bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets. If ever you disturb our streets again, your lives will pay the forfeit of the peaks. For this time, all the rest depart away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? But do struck nine. I me. Sad hour seemed long. Was that my household that went in so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favor. First I am in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough and proof. Alas, whose view is muffled still. Should with our eyes see pathways to his will. Or shall we die? Oh, me, what fray was here? Yet, tell me not, for I have hurt it all. Still waking sleep, it is not what it is. Does thou not laugh? No, cuz, I rather weep. Good heart, at what? At thy good heart suppression. Why such love transgression? Griefs of mine own lie heaven in my breast. Which thou would have it propagate to have it pressed. With more of thine, this love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Farewell, my cuss. Soft, I will go along. Tell me its sadness. Who is that you love? A right good marked man. And she's fair I love. A right fair marked fair cuss as soon as hit. Well, in that hit, you miss. Should not be hit with Cupid's arrow. 
She hath Diane's wit. Then she hath sworn that she will still live chaste? She hath. And then that sparing makes huge waste. Be ruled by me. Forget to think of her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty into thine eyes, examine other beauties. Tis the way to call her exquisite. In question more, farewell. Thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or else die in debt. God be Godden, I pray, sir, can you read? I mine own fortune and mine misery. Perhaps you have learned it without book, but I pray, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know thy letters and thy language. Ye say honestly, rest you, Mary. Stay! Good fellow! I can read. Senor Martino and his wife and daughters, Count Jan Samain and his beauteous sisters, the Lady Widover Travio, Senor Planchito and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet and his wife and daughters, my fair niece, Rosaline, Livia, Senor Valentino and his cousin Tybalt, Luciana, lively Helena, a fair assembly. Whither should they come? Up. Uh, whither? To supper, to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet, and if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. At this same ancient feast of Capulet, such the fair Rosaline, who thou so lovest with all the admired beauties of Verona. Go thither, and with untainted eye, compare her face to some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. How go along, and no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendor of mine own. What? 
Shall this speech be spoke for our excuse? Or on with an apology? The date is out of such prolixity. Give me a torch. I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the lights. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. And not I. Believe me, you have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have soles of lead. So stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft. To soar with his light feathers and so bound, I cannot bound a pitch above doors woe. Under love's heavy burden, though I sink. And to sink should you burden love. Too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? It is too rude, too rough, too boisterous, and it pricks like a thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. And we mean well going to the mass, but tis not where to go. Why, may one ask? I dreamt the dream tonight. And so did I. Well, what was yours? The dreamers often lie. And better sleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than the agate stone upon the forefinger of an alderman, drawn by a team of little atomies athwart men's noses as they lie asleep. Her wagoner is a small, gray-coated net, not so big as the round little worm ripped from the lazy finger of a maid. Her chariot is an empty hazelnut, made by the joiner squirrel or the old grub. Time out of mind the fairy's coachmakers, and in the state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. Or courtier's knees who dream on curtsy straight, or lawyer's fingers who straight on fees dream, or lady's lips who straight on kisses dream, which off the angry mab with blisters plagues because their breasts with sweetmeats tainted are. Sometimes she gallops over a courtier's nose and dreams he of smelling out a suit. Sometimes comes she with a tithe fake's tail, tickling a parson's nose as he lies asleep. Sometimes she driveth over a soldier's neck and dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, of ambuscados, of Spanish blades, of heeds five fathom deep, and then anon drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes, and being thus frightened, swears a prayer to and sleeps again. This is that very mad that plats the manes of horses in the night. This is the hag that when maids lie on their back, presses into them, learning them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Peace, Peace Marcusio. Peace, thou talkst of nothing. True, I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain. This, when you talk of, blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early, for my misgives yet. Some consequences yet hang in the stars. Direct my sail, on lusty gentlemen.
the hand of yonder knight. I know not, sir. Oh, she doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night. Did my heart love till now? For swear it's sight, for I never saw true beauty till this night. This, by his voice, should be a Montague. Why, how now, kinsman? Wherefore storm you so? Lady, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that has come hither in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis he, that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz. Let him alone. I would not for the wealth of all the town here in my house do him disparagement. Therefore, be patient. Take no note of him. It fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure him. He shall be endured. Are you the master here or me? Go to, you make a mutiny among my guests. Why, lady, tis a shame. Go to, go to, you're all saucy boy, so indeed. I will withdraw, but this intrusion now see me, sweet, shall convert to bitter gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand the holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stand to smooth their rough touch with a tender kiss. Good pilgrim, you do wrong your hands too much, which mannerly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands. That pilgrim's hands do touch, and palm to palm as holy palmers kiss. I have not saint lips, and holy palmers too? Aye, pilgrim, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. They pray, grant thou, lest faith turn to despair. Saints do not move, though grant for prayer's sake. And move not, for my prayer's effect I take. Thus from my lips, by yours my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from thy lips? Oh, trespass with the urge, give me my sin again. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is your mother? Mary, bachelor. Her mother is the lady of the house. Is she a Capulet? Oh, dear, account my life is my foe's debt. Away be gone, the sport is not the best. I so I fear the more is mine rest. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. More torches here. Come on, then, let's to bed. Oh, sirrah, by my fay, it waxes late. I'll to my rest. Come hither, nurse. What is yon gentleman? His name is Romeo and a Montague the only son of your great enemy. My only love, sprung from my only hate. Too early seen, unknown, and known too late. Anon, anon, come, let's away, the strangers all are gone. Conjure to Romeo, humors, madman, passion, lover, 
I conjure thee by Rosaline's bright eye, by her high forehead and scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh. <laughs> Come, he'll hill himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love and best befits the dark. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, <clears throat> shall we go? Go then, for tis in vain to seek him here. That means not to be found. He just as far as I never felt a wound. But soft, what's light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. That thou her maid art more fair than she. Be not her maid, if she is envious. Her vest of livery is yet but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it, so cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks. Yet, she says nothing. What's of that? Her eyes discourses, and I will answer it. I am too bold, it is me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there? They in her head? The brightness of her cheeks would shame those stars as daylight doth the lamp. Her eye in heaven were through an airy ridge of stream so bright that the birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, if I were a glove upon thy hand, that I might touch that cheek. Ay, me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious as the night being over my head. As is a winged messenger of heaven. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not be but sworn my love, I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more? Or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other parts belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, Take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me my love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I'll never be Romeo. What man art thou that thus be screened in night, so stumblest on my counsel? By a name. I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, it is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it's written? I will tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance, and yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo? And a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislikes. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? With love like wings that I are perch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. And what love can do, that dares love to tempt, 
Thy kingsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack! There lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet. I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have a nice cloak to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here. By whose direction foundest thou out this place? My love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot yet. Thou wert as far as that vast shore watching from the farthest sea. I would adventure for such merchandise. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet, if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false at lovers' perjuries, then say Jove laughs. O oh, gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or, if thou thinkest I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else, not for the world, in truth, fair Montague, I am too fond, and therefore thou mayest think my behavior light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overheardest, ere I was where my true love's passion, therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love which the dark night hath so discovered. Well, lady, by yon the blessed moon, I swear, that tipped with silver all these fruit oh, trees. swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all, or if thou wilt, Swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. My heart's dear love. No, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract tonight. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden. Good night, good night, as sweet repose and rest. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love, faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it. And yet, I would it were to give again. What is thou with it? For what's purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have. For both are infinite. Juliet! I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little. I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am afeard, pain in the night. Oh, this is but a dream. Too flattering sweet to be substantial. Dear Romeo, and good night indeed, if that thy bent of love be honorable, thy purpose, marriage, send me word tomorrow. Madam! I come anon. But if thou meetest not well, I do beseech thee. Madam! By and by I come to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul. A thousand times good night. A thousand times the worse. To watch thy light. Love goes towards love. I have schoolboys from their books. But love from love towards cool with heavy looks. Hist, Romeo, hist. <laughs> oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again. Bondage is hoarse and may not speak aloud. Else would I tear the cave where Echo lies, and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine, with repetition of Romeo's name. Is it my soul that calls upon my name? Romeo! My dear? At what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here, till thou remember it. I shall forget. 
to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And now still say, to have thee still forget, forget in any other home but this. Tis almost morning, I would have thee gone. And yet, no further than a wanton's bird, who lets it hop a little from her hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jive, and with a silk thread plucks its back again, so loving jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet, so would I. Yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night, good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep dwell upon thine eye, peace in thy breast. Would I were to sleep in peace? So sweet to rest. Hence why to my ghostly father sail, his help to crave and my dear hap to tell. Smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light. The earth that smothers nature is her tomb, what is her burying grave that is her womb. Within the infant's rind of this small flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this, being smelt with that part cheers each part, being tasted slays all senses with the heart. And two such opposed kings encamp them still in men as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worst is predominant, full soon the cacker deaf eats up that plant. Good morning, Father. Benedicte, what early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight? That last is true. That sweet arrest was mine. God, pardon sin, was thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline? My ghostly father? <laughs> no, I have forgot that name, and that name's woe. That's good, my son, but where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, hast thou asked me again? I have been feasting with my enemy. Be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. And plainly no, my heart's dear love is set. On the fair daughter of rich Capulet. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here? Is Rosaline, whom thou did love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men love then lies not truly in their heart, but in their eyes. And art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Woman may fall when there's no strength in men. Thou chiced me off for loving Rosaline? For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. I pray thee, chide me not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. Oh, she knew well. Thy love did read by rote and could not spell. But come, come, young wavier, go with me. In one respect, I'll die assisted to be. Oh, let us hence. I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. Tonight. Not to his father, so I spoke with this man. Ah, that same pale, hard-hearted wench. That Rosaline torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo. Senor Romeo, bonjour. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. <laughs> what counterfeit did I give you? The ship, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon good, Mercutio. My business 
It was great. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Switch and spur, switch and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase, I have done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I am sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? Thou was never with me for anything when thou was not there for the goose. Stop there! Stop there! Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hare? Thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I had come to the full depth of my tail and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. Here's goodly gear. <laughs> a sail, a sail. To, to, a shirt and a smock. Gregory, anon, my fan, Gregory. Good Gregory to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. God ye good morrow, gentlemen. God ye good and fair gentlewoman. Is it good then? Tis no less, I tell you, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Out upon you. What a man are you? Hey, gentlewoman, that's God himself hath made tomorrow. By my troth, it is well said for himself tomorrow. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I could tell you, but. Young Romeo will be much older than when you have found him, than when you have sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for I fought or worse. <laughs> you say well. Yea, is the worst well? Very well took in faith. Wisely, wisely. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. I will follow you. Well, farewell, ancient lady. Lady? 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 Merry farewell. I pray to you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? A gentleman, nurse, that loves to hear himself talk. And to speak anything against me, scurvy knave. And thou must stand by and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure? I saw no man use you of pleasure. <laughs> now for God I am so vexed, every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave. And if ye shall lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you shall deal double with her, truly, it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. Nurse, commit me to thy lady and mistress. I protest unto thee. In good heart and thy faith. I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. Well, will thou tell her, nurse? Dost thou not mark me? I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentlemanlike offer. Bid her device. Some means to come shrift this afternoon, and she, at fire lower sale, shall be shrived and married. Commit me to her. By a thousand times. Gregory, anon, Gregory, take my fan and go before and apace. <laughs> and warm youthful blood, she would be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and his to me. But old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh God, she comes. Oh honey nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Gregory, stay at the gate. Now, good sweet nurse, O oh Lord, why lookest thou sad? I am aweary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache. What a jaunt have I had. I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee. Speak, good, good nurse. Speak. Jesu, what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? <sighs> how art thou out of breath, when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Go that way, wench. Serve God. But have you died at home? 
No, no, but all this I did know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches. What a head I have. My back, ah, oh, to other side. My back, my back. Reshew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jaunting up and down. In faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says like an honest gentleman, a courteous and a kind and a handsome, and I warrant, a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within, where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? Oh, God's lady dear. Here's such a coil, come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to Shrift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Hi to high fortune. Honest nurse, farewell. smiles the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours would sorrow chide us not. Amen, amen. But come what sorrow can, it cannot counterfeit the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Close our hands in holy words? Then love devouring death do what he dares. It is enough I may but call her mine. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. Ah, shall Juliet. Measure of joy be heat like mine, let thy skill be more to blaze in it. Sweeten thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold to imagine happiness that both receive in this their encounter. Conceit, more rich in matter than in words, brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, come with me, and we shall make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till Holy Church incorporate two in one. <laughs> shall not escape a bra, for now these hot days is the mad blood stirring. Thou art like one of those fellows that, when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table and says, God send me no need of thee. But by the operation of the second cuff, draws it upon the jar when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come, thou art as hot a jack in thy mood as any in Italy, and as soon moved to be moody and assume moody to be moved. And I were so apt to quarrel as thou art any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple? <laughs> oh, simple. By my head, here comes a capulet. By my heel, I care not. Gentlemen, good din, a word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir and you will give me an occasion. Oh, 
Could thou not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consort Consort! Romeo. What, dost thou make us minstrel? Here's my fiddlestick, here's that shall make you dance. Sounds consort. We talk here in public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place and reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Her old eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes were made to look, let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man, Romeo. The hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt! The reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse to appertaining ways to such a greeting. Villain am I none, therefore farewell. I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee. Oh, calm, dishonorable, violent, submission. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What was thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives. I am for you. Is it Mercutio? Put that ah. up here up. Ah. Ah. Drop it, Valio. Be down in weapons. Ah. Oh, Tybalt! Good, Mercutio! I am hurt. Oh, plague on both your houses. What? Art thou hurt? Aye, aye, tis a scratch. A scratch? Where is my page? Go, villain, fetch a surgeon. Courage, man. The hurts cannot be much. A plague on both your houses. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. I thought all for the best. <coughs> Help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague on both your houses. They have made worms meat of me. <coughs> What? Tibble slander? Tibble! An hour hath been my kinsman. Ah, Juliet, thy beauty has made me infeminate. And in my temper soft of valor steel. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, break Mercutio's dead. Here comes the furious Tibble back again. Now, Tybalt, take thy villain back again, for the late thou hast gave us me for Mercutio's soul, paint a little butt over our heads. Stay for thine, must keep him company. Either thou, or I, or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy, and you can soar with them here. Shout with them in! The shout of Terminet. <laughs> Mercutio, I will be death 
to pleading and excuses. Nor tears, nor prayers shall purchase out abuses. Therefore, use none. Let's warm your heads in haste, else when he's found that hour is his last. Pace you fiery footed steeds towards Phoebus' lodging, such a wagoner as Phaethon would whip you to the west, and bring in cloudy nights immediately. Come, gentle knight, come, loving, black browed knight, give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought the mansion of a love, but not yet possessed it. And though I am sold, not yet enjoyed. So tedious is this day, as is the night before some festival to an impatient child that's half new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, well a day he's dead, he's dead, he's dead! Can heaven be so envious? Romeo can, though heaven cannot. Oh, oh Romeo, Romeo! Whoever would have thought it, Romeo? What devil art thou that dost torment me, thus this torture should be worn in dismal hell? Hath Romeo slain himself? I saw the wound, I saw it with my oh, eyes. my heart! Poor bankrupt break at once. Oh, Temple, Temple! The best friend I had! What storm is this that blows so contrary? Is Romeo slaughtered and is Tybalt dead? My dear loved cousin and my dear lord. Tybalt is gone and Romeo is banished. Romeo that killed him, he is banished. Oh, God. Did Romeo's hand shed Tybalt's blood? It did, it did. Alas, the day it did. Hide to your chamber, I will find Romeo to comfort you. I would well where he is, hark ye, your Romeo will be here at night. I'll to him, he is hidden, Lord's cell. Oh, find him, give this ring to my true knight, and bid him come to take his last farewell. <laughs> Brother, what's news? What is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment has vanished from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Huh. Banishment? Be merciful. Say death. For exile hath more terror in his looks much more than death. Not say banishment. Hence from Verona art thou banished shed. Be patient. For the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls. Thou fond madman, hear me but speak a word. Oh, would thou speak again of banishment? I'll give thee armor to keep off that word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy, to comfort thee. Though thou art banished, yet banish it. Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet. This plant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not, it prevails not. Talk no more. Oh, then I see madmen have no ears. Arise, one knocks, hide to my study, by and by. God's will, what simpleness is this? I come, I come. Whence comes you? Who knocks so hard? What's your will? Let me come in and you shall know my errand. I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, then. Oh, holy friar, oh, tell me, holy friar, where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? There, on the ground, with his own tears made drunk. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Why should you?
did he fall into so deep an O? Nurse! Ah, uh, sir, ah, uh, sir. Well, death's the end of all. Spakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps. Oh, tell me, friar. In what vile parts of this anatomy doth my name lodge? Tell me, and I may sack this hateful mansion. Hold thy desperate hand. Art thou a man? Thy form cries out thou art. Go, get thee love, as was decreed, ascend her chamber, hence and comfort her. But look, stay not till the watch be set, for then thou cannot pass to Mantua, where thou shalt live, so we can find a time to blaze thy marriage, reconcile thy friends, and beg pardon of the prince. Go before nurse, commend me to thy lady, and bid her hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto Romeo is coming. Oh, Lord, I could have stayed here all the night to hear good counsel. Oh, what learning is. My Lord, I will tell my lady you will come. Do so, and bid my sweet prepare to chide. Here, sir, a ring she bid me give you, sir. How you make haste, for it grows very late. Oh, my comforts are refined by this. Go hence, good night. Here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence. Sojourn in Mantua, I'll find out your man, and he shall signify from time to time every good hap to you that chances here. Give me thine hand. Tis late, farewell, good night. That a joy past joy calls out on me. It were a grief, so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Unluckily, that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look, you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly. So did I. Well, we were born to die. Tis very late. She'll not come down tonight, I promise you. But for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Command me to your daughter. I will, and know her mind early tomorrow, tonight. She is mewed up to our heaviness. But so, what day is this? Monday, lady. Monday? <laughs> well, Wednesday is too soon. Oh, Thursday, let it be. Oh, Thursday, tell her she shall be married to this noble earl. Lady, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Nightingale and not the lark. It was the lark, the herald of the morn. Oh, Nightingale, look, love, what envious streaks to lace the severing claws of yonder east. Let me be tame, let me be put to death, for I am content. Tell thou would have it so. How oh, is my soul? Let's talk it in that day. It is. It is, I hence be gone away. More light and light, more dark and dark are woes. Madam, nurse, your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary, look about. Then window, let day in, and let life out. Farewell. I will omit no opportunity to convey my greetings, love, to thee. Well, thinkest thou we shall ever meet again? I doubt not. And all these woes shall serve. And sweet discourse is not time to come. Oh God, I have an ill divining soul. Methinks I see thee now thou art below, as one dead in the bottom of a tomb. 
Either my eyesight fails, or thou lookest pale. And trust me, love, in my eyes, so do you. Try sour drinks thou blood. Adieu, adieu. Ho, oh, daughter, are you up? Who is that called? Is it my lady mother? How now, Juliet? Madam, I am not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death. Yet let me weep for such a feeling loss. Well, girl, I bring thee joyful tidings, girl. Mary, my child, early next Thursday morn to the gallant young and noble gentleman, the county Paris at St. Peter's Church shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Now by St. Peter's Church and Peter too, he shall not make me there a joyful bride. You fettle your fine joints to go with Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee by a hurdle thither. Good mother, I beseech you on my knees, hear me with patience but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, lady, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom? Hold your tongue. I speak no treason. Oh, God, ye God did. May not one speak? Peace, you mumbling fool! Thursday is near. Lay hand and heart advice. And you be mine, I'll give you to my friend. Oh, God, oh, nurse, how shall this be prevented? What sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy? Some comfort, nurse. Faith, here it is. Romeo is banished, and all the world to nothing that he dares ne'er come back to challenge you. Or if he do, it must needs be by stealth. Then since the case so stands, as now it doth, I think it best you marry with the county. Speakest thou from the heart, and from my soul too, or beshrew them both. Amen. What? Well, thou hast comforted me marvelous much. Go in and tell my lady I am gone, having displeased my mother, to lure itself, to make confession and to be absolved. Mary, I will, and this is widely done. and nothing may prorogue it on Thursday next be married with the county. Tell me not, friar, that thou hearest of this, unless thou tell me how I may prevent it. Hold, daughter, I do spy a kind of hope which craves is desperate in execution, as that is desperate which we would prevent. If rather than to marry the county Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Oh, bid me leap rather than marry Paris, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unstained wife to my sweet love. Hold then, go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial. Being then in bed, no warmth, no breath shall testify thou livest. And then awake as from a pleasant sleep. Now. When the bridegroom in the morning comes to rouse thee from thy bed, there thou art dead. Thou shalt be born into that same ancient vault where all the kindreds of the Capulets lie. In the meantime, against thou shalt wait. Shall Romeo by my letters know our drift? And hither shall he come, and he and I will watch thy waking. And that same night shall he bear thee hence to Mantua. And this shall free thee from this present shame. If no inconstant toy, no womanish fear abate thy valor in the acting. Give me, give me. Oh, tell not me of fear. Hold, get you gone. Be strong and prosperous in this resolve. I'll send a friar with speed to Mantua with letters to thy lord. Love, give me strength, and strength shall help afford. Farewell, dear father. What? 
Is my daughter gone to Friar Lawrence? I forsooth. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. A peevish self-willed harlotry it is. See where she comes from shrift with merry look. Or how now, my headstrong? Where hast thou been getting? By holy Lawrence, to fall prostrate here, and beg your pardon. Pardon, I beseech you. Henceforward, I am ever ruled by you. Go! Send for the county. Tell him of this. We'll have this knot knit up tomorrow morning. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet to help me sort such needful ornaments? No, no, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse, go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. Aye, those attires are best. But, gentle nurse, I pray thee, leave me to myself tonight. What are you busy, ho? Need you my help? No, madam. We have called such necessaries as are behoveful for our state tomorrow. I will get thou to bed and rest where thou hast need. Good night. Farewell. God knows when we shall meet again. I have a faint, cold fear thrills through my veins. Come, vile. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then, tomorrow morning? No, no, this shall forbid it. Lie thou there. How, if when I am laid into the tomb, I wake before the time that Romeo come to redeem me. There's a fearful point. Shall I not then be stifled in the vault, to whose foul mouth no healthsome air breathes in, and there die strangled ere my Romeo comes? Or, if I live, is it not very like that horrible conceit of death and night, together with the terror of the place, as in a vault, an ancient receptacle where for these many hundred years the bones of all my buried ancestors lie packed, where bloody Tybalt, yet but greed and earth lies festering in his shroud, where, as they say, at some hours in the night, spirits resort. Oh, if I wake, shall I not be distraught and madly play with my forefather's joints and pluck the mangled Tybalt from his shroud and in this rage with some great kinsman's bone, as with a club, dash out my desperate brains. Oh, look, methinks I see my cousin's ghost seeking out Romeo that did spit his body upon a rapier's point. Stay, Tybalt, stay! Romeo, I come. This do I drink to thee. Mistress, what mistress, Juliet? Fast, I warrant her she. Why, lamb, why, lady, fie, you slug bed. Why, love, I say. Madam, sweetheart, why, bride. What, not a word. Madam, madam, madam. I must needs wake you. Lady, 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 alas, alas.
ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never return. Death is my son-in-law. Death is my heir. How I thought long to see this morning's face. And doth it give me such a sight as this? Peace. Oh, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven and yourself hath part in this fair maid, and now heaven hath all. Madam, go you in, and go, Sir Paris, and every one prepare to follow this fair corpse unto her grave. Trust the flattering truth of sleep. My dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom lord sits lightly on his throne. And all this day is an unaccustomed spirit. List me above the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamt that my lady came and found me dead. Strange dream. It gives a dead man leave to think and breathe such life with kisses in thy lips that I revived and was an emperor. Ah, me. How sweet is love is self possessed. And what love shadows are so rich in joy. And news of Verona? How oh, now, Balthazar? Is thou not bring me letters from the friar? How doth my lady? Is my father well? How fair is my Juliet? I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in the capital's monument, and her immortal part with the angels lives. I saw her laid low with her kindreds, but oh, pardon me for bringing these ill news. Is it even so? Not a fire, you stars! Thou knowest my lodging. Get me ink and paper and hire post horses. I will hiss tonight. I do beseech you, sir. Have patience. Your looks are pale and wild and do it for to misadventure. Tush! Art thou deceived? Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do. Does thou not bring me letters from the friar? Not my good lord. No matter. Get to be gone. And hire those horses. I will be with thee straight. Oh, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief! Thou art swift to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. Do remember an apothecary, and here but he dwells. What ho, apothecary? Who calls so loud? Come, hither, man. I see that thou art poor. Hold here forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison. Such mortal drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he that utters them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness? And fear us to die? Famine in thy cheeks. The world affords no lot to make thee rich. And be not poor, but break it. And take this. My poverty, but not my will, consent. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Put this in any liquid thing you will, and drink it off. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. There is thy gold. Worse poisons to men's souls. Doing more murders in this loathsome world 
And these poor compounds may as not sell. I sell thee poison. Thou hast sold me none. Farewell. Buy food, get thyself in flesh. Come, cordial, and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave, for there must I use thee. Friar John, welcome from Mantua. What says Romeo? Or if his mind be writ, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out. What of our order to associate me? Here in this city, visiting the sick and finding him the searchers of the town. Suspecting that we both were in a house where an infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth, so that my speed to Mantua there would stay. Who bear my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Here it is again nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune, by my brotherhood, this letter was not nice, but full of charge of their import. And the neglecting it may do much danger. Fire John, go hence. Get me an iron corn, bring it straight into my cell. Brother, I'll go and bring it thee. Now must I to the monument alone. Within three hours, fair Juliet will wake. She will beshrew me much that Romeo hath no notice of these accidents. But I will write again to Mantua, and I'll keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corpse clothed in a dead man's tomb. Tuck in that venturing iron. Hold. Take this letter. Early in the morning, see thou deliver it to my lord and father. I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship? Take thou that live, and be prosperous. And farewell, good fellow. For all the same, I'll hide me hereabout. His looks I fear, and his intents I doubt. Thou detestable maw! Thou womb of death, gorged with the dearest morsel of the earth. Thus I enforce thy rotten jaw to open, and in despite, I'll cram thee with more food. This is that banished haughty Montague that murdered my love's cousin, which, was, which with grief it is supposed the fair creature died, and here is come to do some villainous shame to the dead bodies. I will apprehend him. Stop thy unhallowed toil, vile Montague. I must indeed, and therefore came I hither. The good just a youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence, leave me. Think upon thee gone. Let them affright thee. I beseech the youth, but not another sin on my head. By urging me to fury, I'll be gone. By heaven, I love thee better than myself. For I came hither armed against myself. Stay not to be gone, live, and hereafter say, 
A madman mercy bid thee run away. I do defy thy conjurations and apprehend thee for a felon here. Would thou provoke me? Then have at thee, boy. Oh, Lord, they fight. I will go call the watch. <laughs> Merciful, open the tomb. Lay me with Juliet. In faith, I will. Let's be perused this face. Mercutio Kingsman, the noble county Paris. Oft our men are at the point of death. Have they been merry? Which their keepers call a lightning before death. How may I call this a lightning? My love, my wife, death, I suck thy honey of thy breath. And depart again. Here, here will I remain. With the pearls that are thy chambers maids. Oh, here will I set up my everlasting rest and shake the yoke of an auspicious stars from this world where we flesh. Eyes, look your last. Arms, take your last embrace. And lips, call you with the doors of breath. Seal with a righteous kiss. A dateless bargain to an engrossing death. Come for the conduct. Come on, savory guide. How desperate pilots. Now at once run on. I see sick where it barks. Here's to my love. <laughs> oh, true apothecary. Thy drugs are quick. That's what the kiss. I die. Saint Francis, be my speed. How oft tonight have my old feet stumbled at graves? Who's there? Here's one, a friend, and one that knows you well. Bliss be upon you. Tell me, my good friend, what torches yawn that vainly lends his light to grubs and eyeless skulls, as I discern it burneth at the capel's monument. It doth so, holy sir. And there's my master, one that you love. Who is it, Romeo? Go with me to the vault. I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hit. Go then! I'll go alone. Oh, fear comes upon me, Romeo! Romeo! Oh, pale, what? Paris, too? Ah. What an unkind hour is guilty of this lamentable chance. The lady stirs. O oh, comfortable friar, where is my lord? I do remember well where I should be, and there I am. Where is my Romeo? I hear some noise. Lady, come from this nest of death, contagion and unnatural sleep. The greater power that we can contradict hath thwarted our intents. Come, come away. Thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead, and Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Stay not to question, for the watch is coming. Come go, good Juliet. I dare no longer stay. Go, get thee hence. For I will not away. 
What's here? A cup closed in my true love's hand. Poison, I see, hath been his timeless end. Oh, Charles, drunk all? And left no friendly drop to help me afterwards. I will kiss thy lips, haply some poison yet doth hang on them, to make die with the restorative. Leave, boy, which way? Yea, noise? Then I'll be brief. Oh, happy dagger, this is thy sheath. There rust, and let me die. Time and place doth make me against of this direful murder. Yet here I stand, both to impeach and impurge myself condemned and myself excused. Then say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be brief, for my short date of breath is not so long as is a tedious tale. Romeo, dear, dead, was husband to that Juliet, and she, dear, dead that Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, who knew made death banish the bridegroom from the city. All this I know, and to the marriage her nurse is privy. And if all in this be miscarried by my fault, let my old life be sacrificed some hour before this time into the rigor of the severus law. We still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say in this? I brought my master news of Juliet's death. Give me the letter. I will look on it. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For there never was a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo.
name is Zachary Walker. I represent Detroit School of Arts. I am an incoming 12th grader, and I play the roles of Samson, mu musician, and Mercutio. Yes. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Hillary Lark. I represent Cass Technical High School. I'm going into the 11th grade, and I play Tibble and Fire Lawrence. Detroit School of Arts. I'm going into the 11th grade and I played Benvolia. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, my name is Kari Hubbard. I represent Eastern Michigan University. I'm going into my first year and I play the role of Romeo. I represent Detroit School of the Arts. I'm going into the 12th grade, and I play the role of Juliet. <laughs> Thank you to the Fisher Foundation for making this show possible. Parents, we are going to change back into our regular clothes and meet you here for the scholarship ceremony. All right.